Hey, my name's Jerem Rush. I'm an artist from Melbourne, Australia. My first love is printmaking, but I focus mainly in screen printing because of its really bold colours and strong outlines. When I travel, I like to record images of the places, the people and the landscapes that I see. But it's pretty difficult to do that in the medium of printmaking. So instead, I like to use observational collage. Not unlike screen printing, observational collage uses flat colours and bold lines to define form. It also uses various grounds to define picture planes. Here's an example of some of the work I created using observational collage. I know it's pretty bright, but hey, what can you do? I've been asked by the Mornington Regional Gallery to put together a video helping you out with some of your home time creativity. So let's take a closer look at what is collage. Collage is not some classy French person's way of saying college. It's a technique created by sticking various different materials such as photos, uh, coloured paper, fabric, basically anything onto a background. If you can stick it down and put it up, it's basically a collage. Collage was made famous by artists such as Hannah Hoke, Robert Rauschenberg, George Brack, and Matisse with his blue nudes. It's Matisse's flat use of colour which we will draw most inspiration from when we're tackling observational collage. But you can use basically any type of paper you like. To create the collage, we're going to need to attempt to create the illusion of depth by using a number of picture grounds in different colours. Grounds are a breakdown of the space you see in a picture. The foreground is the space closest to the viewer. The background is the space farthest away. The middle ground is the space between the two. The colour or paper we use is normally dependent upon what you have available. You also need a pencil, an eraser, a fine liner, scissors and glue. Our first drawing is going to be the foreground, which in this picture is the letterbox at the front of the house. I'm going to use uh, pink so it stands out brightly and start off using a pencil just to sketch it in. Then later on, I'm going to pen that in using a fine liner. When you're drawing your foreground image, Make sure to try to draw exactly what you see from the position you're standing. Make note of any perspective lines, like the ones you might see in the fence here. Once you've got in the basic shapes, you can start adding in more specific details like the bricks. Make note of the way each brick relates to the ones around it. Don't forget to lightly sketch in the outline of the house to provide a guide for your next middle ground and background. So once I have got the main foreground image drawn out, this is the letterbox and the front fence, then I kind of line it up against the middle ground colour that I'm going to use, which is going to be orange. I make a few little marks to mark out where my ground is going to be. To define my forms and know where 
pieces are going to be for the image. So now I've got that marked in, I go outside and I start drawing my middle ground for my house. Next up is the middle ground. That's going to be the main house, which is basically the main drawing in this work. Uh, its colour is going to be in orange, just because it works so well with the colour pink. Once again, standing from the same place you created the foreground drawing, you can sketch in the basic shapes of your middle ground image, slowly adding in any further details. Now we have the foreground and the middle ground penciled in, we're going to now pencil in the background. I'm just going to mark my points here, and we've got the sky just in this corner here. the house behind. Once again, make sure you are standing in the same place for the background image as you were with the other two. And we're done. Okay. okay, so now I've penciled it in, I'm going to pen it in so it's a little bit more permanent and bolder. When you use a fine liner, first define any of the existing shapes, such as the bricks in the fence or the actual post box. Once you've completed penning this in, then begin adding any any textures like the ones you see in the bricks. Notice how the lines in the bars of the fence get smaller and closer together as they get further away. This is called perspective lines. An effective drawing is one that pays attention to details like the texture of the cracked clay in a brick or the varied lines you might see to create grass. Once you've completed the foreground drawing with sufficient detail, we then go ahead and pen in the middle ground drawing. Due to the fact that the middle ground is further away, you could use a thinner fine liner like a 0.4. This will provide you with more detail and give you an extra illusion of depth. I'm just going to use the same 0.6 though and continue on with the drawing. When drawing objects like bricks or tiles, always make sure to create them line by line. Remembering to do the new line of tiles sitting in between the line of tiles or bricks on the previous one. Try and add in as much detail as you possibly can. It is all about the details in these type of images. If you bring in specific details, then it just makes it look that much more effective.
window cornices, tile tops, different plant types, window ledges, and particular fences all add to the individual character of the place that you live in. It is details such as these which make each house different to the next, and, by extension, each detail created in a drawing makes them different to another individual's drawing. And this is exactly what we want. Houses all looking the same could be very, very boring. Here's the foreground. Here's the middle ground. And now, here's the background. This is probably the simplest part of the drawing. Although the background image is such a small section, it is still an important part of an observational collage, as it adds variety, colour and shape to your image. So once we've penned in our foreground, our middle ground and our background, we can begin to cut out each section. So we just go around the foreground image. So when you are cutting out your three drawings, make sure you are careful enough to define the forms from each other and to make sure you aren't cutting out any important detail. Like so, it doesn't matter if you don't get it exactly right. It's more just to get the feel of it. Once you got that, then you're gonna put that in front of middle ground like so and I cut out the background image basically here we're going to use the middle ground image to uh, be our base. And that will slot somewhere in here, like so. So starting off with the middle ground, which is going to be our base to stick the images on, we can add in our foreground image and we'll line up our background image to work a little bit better. But what we might do is cut out that sky uh, so this can sit in behind it before we go ahead and start to stick anything down. So we're going to cut out the sky now. So we just, again, just vaguely, it's probably good to get in this little corner because it creates that definition. And just gonna cut it out like so. And then what we're gonna do, let's see how well it sits with yellow image and 
Again, let's throw in the sky underneath here. So eventually, the work will look not dissimilar to this. We'll probably throw in some clouds and stuff afterwards, but basically that's how you do it. You're going to have a number of pieces of scrap that uh, are left over from from the collage, which you can use to make other collages with, or make some just abstract colours and shapes which look really awesome. When you stick down your three grounds, you have to work out where the background image is going to sit on the sky. We can do that by arranging the middle ground and the background onto the sky and marking out its edge with a pencil. Once the yellow background is clearly defined with a pencil, you can glue it down making sure to get the glue into all appropriate corners and edges. Then glue the orange middle ground, making sure we have covered all the details and corners. When sticking the orange middle ground down, make sure to line up all the edges of the paper. And finally, the pink foreground image, the post box. If you did not stick some of the details down properly, you can always touch that up after the initial gluing. Once you have carefully stuck down your background, your middle ground and your foreground, you can go in with your fine liner and add in any extra detail like marks on the bricks, grass on the lawn and texture on the tree. So I hope you like what you came up with using observational collage. The MPRG would love to see what you have done, so you can email us copies of your work on MPRG at mornpen.vic.gov.au That's M-P-R-G at M-O-R-N-P-E-N dot vic dot gov dot au You can follow Jerem Rush Artist or the Mornington Peninsula Regional Gallery on Instagram or Facebook.